Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Lamplight City. We are in the jail. We've just spoken to Andrew Martin, uh, sorry, Albert Martin, and it seems like maybe he didn't commit the inverted commas murder after all. Um, he seems like a relatively nice person, to be honest. There might be a bit of a hidden agenda going on, but we're going to keep an open mind because, you know, we're a private investigator. You never know whether we're being misled. Now, we've got a whole list of things in our casebook that we can go and do. Uh, we need to question the residents, but for that, we're going to need a stimulant. So I'm thinking we probably will get coffee for that. And we've got to investigate all these other places as well. Speak to Juliet Montgomery at the university and deliver the message to Albert Martin's mother. So let's head off to the coffee shop, I guess. See if we can get any coffee. I don't know if that is actually going to be a thing. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of places we can go to here now on the map, which is pretty awesome. Maybe also we have something at our house which can act as a stimulant, seeing as we also are on sedatives from time to time. I don't know. But let's go to the coffee house first and try that. Okay. Uh, She's running back and forth at lightning speed. Clearly she dips into the coffee supply. Uh, is there a way we can get any If this is coffee? how they store their coffee beans, it's probably a better idea to ask for tea. All that metal and tubing just to serve a hot cup of coffee? Huh, maybe we can't actually get coffee. Let's try talking to Constance and see if she knows anything about how to get coffee here. Maybe it was can we talk? just no, the wrong I'm, idea. I'm listening. Uh, anything we talked to her about? Review case? No, not now. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. So, that doesn't seem to be what we need to do after all. But it was worth a try. So, off we go. Let's go and speak to Juliet at the university then. It's probably good to speak to everyone and get an idea of what's going on before we head to crime scenes. Or sort of locations that we need to investigate like here and uh, here. Because then maybe we can see if people implicate themselves a little bit. So let's go to the university. Oh, this is nice. Flowers again. This oh, it's as though we've journeyed to the tropics. I don't know how you can stand to keep that coat on in here. <laughs> there seems to be a real theme of flowers so far in this game. I'm, I'm all for it, to be honest. They're beautifully animated. Um, look at all of these. Those flowers are definitely not native to this area. They seem to be thriving in their glass tubes, though. Yeah. yeah um, Quite the assortment of plants they keep in here. I wonder if they serve any purpose or are just meant to look pretty. Maybe a bit of both. It reminds me a lot of Kew Gardens in London. I've never seen a flower grow that big. What do you suppose they're feeding? Ooh, this is pretty cool. Judging from that pipe, that contraption must be used to keep the plants hydrated. But it looks like a giant earwax removal to me. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Ooh, there's a bonsai tree here. One of those cute little Japanese trees that are all the rage these days. Personally, I don't see how giving a tree a haircut is meant to be relaxing. Yeah, see, you don't understand the relaxation of gardening. Let's speak to Juliet then. Pardon the disturbance, but are you Juliet Montgomery? I am. And you are? Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator looking into the events surrounding your mother's attempted murder. Ah, of course. Have you got time to answer some questions? Yes, that shouldn't be a problem. Good. Okay, let's ask about Madame Dupre herself. Do you know anything about the events leading up to your mother's premature interment? No, it was a complete shock. Mother seemed to be perfectly healthy and full of life. Then, without warning, she was dead. Or so we thought. I take it you were glad to be wrong? Uh, what a ridiculous question. Of course I was. What sort of heartless beast would celebrate their mother's death? Oh, I could name a few. Juliet definitely didn't shed any tears over Madame Dupre, though. That much is obvious. Yeah, and she looked off over Montgomery, here. Montgomery, you don't have to lie to me. I'm not going to assume you tried killing your mother just because you weren't upset by her death. I felt terrible about it. You have to understand, I didn't want her to be dead. I just felt a sense of relief. Please, don't think me a horrible person, Mr. Fordham. It's just that mother and I aren't currently on the best of terms. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Releases all the burden on her, I guess. A relationship with Albert. Why don't you and your mother oh, no, get along? Okay. The mother first. We've never completely seen eye to eye on anything. She always disapproved of anything I did. When I was younger, she used to forbid me from speaking to the servants. I saw no harm in a kind word or smile, but she warned us that if we were too familiar, they would take liberties. Then when I declared my intentions to pursue academic studies, she really went livid. In her opinion, a university education was tantamount to a chastity belt. 
What sort of man would want a wife with a head full of useless facts, she'd say. Personally, I've always found intelligence to be quite attractive. Likewise? I assume your mother didn't approve of your involvement with Mr. Martin? A rather forward question, Mr. Fordham. But you're not mistaken. I'm not sure how she managed to find out about Albert and me, but when she did, she nearly had a conniption. As I'm sure you can understand, the situation at home has been less than perfect in the last few months. I'd really rather not dwell on it. Fair. Um, so, she seems to also be corroborating what Albert told us, that Madame Dupre was not a very nice woman. Well, I guess she's still not a very nice woman. Um, but yeah, it seems like she's backing up his story. So let's ask about the servants. You mentioned you were friends with the servants. Yes, that's right. I didn't care that they worked for us. Everyone needs a friend. Did your mother ever mistreat them? Mistreat? No, I wouldn't say so. She was always very stern, though, and quite cold. If they ever shirked their duties or misbehaved, they were punished, of course, but nothing out of the ordinary that I ever saw. Most of the servants are my friends, but I'm closest with Amelie, the kitchen maid. Mother wasn't too happy about ah. that. Amelie's been around as long as I can remember. She's like the aunt I never had. We've met her, and she didn't really want to talk to us, so it is possible that I was right when I said she might know something. Let's ask about Albert, then. What can you tell me about Albert Martin? I'm not quite sure where to begin. Why not start by telling me what your relationship with him was? We met here at the greenhouse. He was working as an assistant, sweeping and cleaning and fetching things for the students. My focus was on academics, naturally. I wasn't too interested in romance. In fact, I've had to turn away nearly every single one of my classmates. But with Albert, I found myself intrigued. I noticed him stealing glances, lingering just a bit too long after bringing over a book or flask, sweeping the same patch of floor near me over and over again. It wasn't too long before I had him bringing me tools and equipment, regularly. <laughs> I see. As I mentioned, Mother was an absolute terror when she found out. Do you believe Mr. Martin did what he stands accused of? I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't seem like him, but Albert can be quite passionate. If the police believe he's to blame, then they must have a reason for it. It wasn't any secret that he hated Mother. Perhaps I should have ended things sooner. It was satisfying to know that Mother was displeased, but I never imagined it would lead to something like that. This. Well, it's nice to see she's all hard. <laughs> Let's ask about herself then. So, he certainly has motive, really, doesn't he, to have done it, but I don't know, we'll see. So, you study botany. Fascinating subject. Are you an admirer of plants, Mr. Fordham? My wife has the green thumb in the household, but I do have a certain appreciation for them. Plants are amazing things, just like people in many ways. How do you mean? They need attention and care. Ignore a plant, and it will wither. Give it too much attention, and it will become sick. Plants have many things to teach us, and I greatly enjoy learning from them. Yeah, plants are absolutely fascinating. I've been watching The Green Planet, which is like a David Attenborough documentary here in the UK, and the, the sort of ecosystems and everything around plants are literally incredible, like mind-blowingly incredible. It's well worth a watch if you can get your hands on it. Uh, let's ask about Andrew. What can you tell me about your brother? Andrew, Mama's precious little boy. If you've met him, you pretty much know all you need to. He's had the whole world handed to him on a silver platter. But he's in for a rude awakening someday. Mother can only provide for him for so long. Okay, greenhouse plant. So it sounds like and Andrew the brother. So Andrew is the brother, Albert is the boyfriend, okay. Um, so yeah, Andrew sounds like a bit of a, a, a nuisance, shall we say. These plants are impressive. Are they yours? Yes. I've developed a method to make them extra healthy and strong. They're larger than anything I've ever seen. How do you do it? Ah, but I can't reveal my secrets, Mr. Fordham. <laughs> the world will hear about my discovery soon enough. Sensible. Incidentally, do you know anything about Easter lilies? No, I don't keep or grow those here. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. Okay. So, we've learnt a little bit by coming here at least. Uh, let's just check there wasn't anything that we could have looked at that we didn't see. Um, I don't think there was, unless there's anything here. No. But it was worth coming to talk to her because she pretty much backs up what Albert was saying about Madame Dupre and that she was not a very nice lady. 
Um, but she did say as well that she wasn't 100% convinced that he didn't commit the inverted commas murder. So there's that. We, we don't really know. So um, what's this? This is Compton Street. We got this one first, didn't we? And then we've got the cemetery and we've got Forest Lane. Uh, let's go to... What? Let's go to Forest... No, let's go to Compton Street. We'll go to Compton Street. We'll have a look around ah, here. Compton Street. We're not too far from Restaurant Row. When's the last time you ate, anyway? Please, let's not add eating to the list of things to nag me about. <laughs> That's true. I don't think we've seen him eat in the whole game yet. Uh, so, uh, is this where... This, I believe, is where Albert Martin's mother lives, right? I'm sure I'm sure that's what they said. Oh yeah, look, restaurants. What's this poster? One of Atwood's re-election posters, sorely lacking a mustache. Go on, Miles. Fix this grievous injustice. <laughs> Not now, Bill. There are more important things to worry about. Spoil sport. <laughs> There's a cab depot. I'm glad the Colson still uses horses. I don't trust the new self-driving cab. <laughs> There's a butcher shop. Considering how many eating establishments are in this neighborhood, the butcher picked a fantastic spot to set up shop. I do notice a distinct lack of stray cats in this neighborhood, though. <laughs> That's true. Uh, right, so let's have a look at this. Bon Bon's restaurant. I never got a chance to go there, but I hear their deviled eggs are simply to die for. Yeah, I had those once. They are... Um... <laughs> A bit gross, I'll be honest. <laughs> Not my thing. Uh, right, so let's go to the door, I guess. I'm sorry, I have no time for visitors today. Uh, I need to speak with you about Albert Martin. Albert gave me a message for you. You're Albert Martin's mother, aren't you? Who are you? Miles Fordham. I spoke with Albert, and he told me to give you a message. He said to tell you that St. Rock's dog is barking. Oh, I see. That's good. That's very good. You better come in, Mr. Fordham. Standing on the street just won't do. Ah. Wonder what that code means then. Guess we're going to find out. Welcome to my home, Mr. Fordham. I am Sabine Martin. I hope you understand that Albert has nothing to do with this awful business. Would you care for some tea? Well, her tune certainly changed when you gave her that message. I wonder what it meant. No, thank you, ma'am. I won't be staying long. It could mean all sorts of things, really. It could mean that somebody's helping to get him out of trouble. It could mean that a plan is in action that they always planned for. We do, we just don't know enough information at the moment. The Virgin Mary? I must admit, she was the last person I was expecting to see in here. Yeah, because like Albert was saying, voodoo is, is mostly misunderstood, so... For all we know, that rider is some sort of demon. He looks like he's having a good time, at least. A rather unremarkable book collection, I'm sorry to say. That statue, on the other hand, gives me the willies. <laughs> uh, what's the deal with the pots? Interesting. Those pots look as though they've been wrapped in tobacco leaves. Ooh. It's an interesting design. Um, what is this? That pattern resembles a flower. Too bad it isn't an Easter lily. It's some old man with a dog standing at the center of a crossroads. If that's meant to have any sort of significance, it's completely lost <laughs> on me. Fair enough. Uh, there's a curtain here. Can we go any further than this, or...? No, we can't. I'm afraid that room is private, Mr. Fordham. I must respectfully ask you to not go in there. Huh. Of course. My apologies. Okay. Well, let's talk to her, then. I've got a few questions for you, Mrs. Martin. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Okay, let's ask about Albert Martin. Do you think your son is capable of doing what he stands accused of? Never. Albert wouldn't harm a fly. That's what the mothers always say. <laughs> True. Why don't you tell me a bit more about him then? He started working at the university laboratory a few years ago. I was so proud of him. The university is quite selective, you know. The same for its staff as well as its students. Yes, I've gotten that impression. I always told Albert to be careful around those high society types, but that one always thinks with his heart first. Is she sure that's the correct body part? <laughs> He's all the family I have, Mr. Ford. <laughs> I love Bill. Let's ask about Madame Dupre. Do you know anything about Madame Laura Dupre? I never met her in person, but I know plenty about her. Like what? Nothing fit for a polite conversation, <laughs> Mr. Fordham. But I can tell you this. Laura Dupre has far more enemies than she lets on. Does that include you or your son? It most certainly does not. Hmm, interesting. 
Let's ask about Juliet. What do you know about Juliet, Madame Dupre's daughter? I know Albert was smitten with her. No matter that I told him to be very careful around her kind. Those rich Creole families don't care much for people like us. To them, we're just a help. But from his telling, Juliet sounded to be a decent soul. It's a shame the same can't be said for her kin. Okay, Albert's message, what did that mean? If you'll indulge my curiosity, what exactly was the meaning of Albert's message? Saint Rock is the patron saint of dogs, as well as the falsely accused. Right. If he sent the message along with you, it means he trusts you, and that I should too. There we go. Oh, I see. Perhaps you were hoping for something more? That's just the way of mysteries, isn't it? <laughs> That's true. How do you mean? The thrill of the unknown is always more exciting than the truth. Mystery yeah. makes life a little more interesting. True, but if mysteries were really better unsolved, I wouldn't have a job. Also true, right? Let's ask her a bit about herself then. What exactly is it you do, Mrs. Martin? I provide services to the public. A delightfully vague answer if there ever was one. Give me something a bit more specific, please. I'm a mambo a Sugway. That means I'm what you call a voodoo queen. I'd give you a detailed explanation of the responsibilities and duties of the role, but your time would be better spent clearing my son's name. Okay, let's ask a bit more about voodoo. Can you tell me a bit more about your religious practices? What I can tell you is that the ignorant whites in this city are afraid of us for no reason. Voodoo is not about black magic or dark spells or turning people into the living dead. It's about healing and life. Naturally, there are misguided souls who may try to use it for ill purposes, but I am not one of those. Sounds like you hit a sore spot. Might be a good idea to stop pressing her on this angle. Yeah, we don't want her to shut down. Uh, ask for tea. I think I'll take you up on your offer for tea, after all. All right, Mr. Fordham. You'll have to give me a few minutes to heat up the kettle. I'll be back shortly. Ah. Is she... Maybe we can have a look behind the curtain while she's gone. Amazing! Even more voodoo stuff back there! Why would she keep these particular items hidden from view? I don't know. Good question. They obviously have some importance to her. I'd suggest asking, but I don't know if that's the best idea given how sensitive she seems to be about the subject. Yeah, I'd suggest we don't ask about that for the time being. Maybe we can the come back. The should be ready in a few minutes, Mr. Fordham. You can help yourself once it's done. You're very kind, Mrs. Martin. So, we were obviously supposed to do that. I, I don't think we'll ask her about what's behind that curtain just yet, because she did ask us not to look behind there. We don't want to sort of betray her trust this early, I don't think, especially seeing as we haven't done much to help her son just yet. Uh, maybe we will later, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, guys, we'll leave it there for now. Some more progress has been made. We're slowly uncovering things. It definitely seems like Madame Dupre and her son are not very nice people and definitely caused problems for Juliet and Albert with their relationship. Whether or not Albert took matters into his own hands with that, I don't know. We don't know yet. I'm leaning towards no currently, but obviously we haven't got all of the evidence yet, so we just can't say. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, and Lyle for all the support. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all next time.